Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you join me once again, and we are moving towards the next criterion from the OCR specification. Today, we're looking at price elasticity of demand and its impact on the effectiveness of an indirect tax. So here we have the criterion from the spec. Evaluate the effect of price elasticity of demand on the impact of an indirect tax. And as ever, for your convenience, I have underlined the directive words, the key words in this particular uh, section of the criterion. So we have evaluate. So this is a likely essay style question. PED as referred to, price elasticity of demand, i.e. the sensitiveness of demand to a change in price. And then the impact of an indirect tax. So by indirect tax, we're obviously talking about a tax on goods and services, such as value-added tax, which in this country at the moment, as you know, is 20%. So I'm going to work through this and give you uh, a few pointers with regard to sort of building your answer through the define, apply, analyze, and then we've got a few uh, evaluation points at the end, which you may wish to consider. This is by no means, of course, a finite list, so by all means, uh, add to it in your own revision time. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So here we have the price elasticity of demand equation. And remember, it is minus percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. And you will no doubt be aware and recall why it's a minus. That is, of course, because of this inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. As price rises, quantity demanded falls. As price falls, quantity demanded rises. Inverse, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so what do we mean when we're talking about elasticity? Well, if it's price elasticity, as opposed to one of the others, which could be income or supply or cross price, when it's price, we're looking at how demand reacts to a change in price. And I'm only going to focus really on, on two specific scenarios here because the other one you're probably unlikely to get uh, in an exam question of this style. So it could be elastic, so that means that demand is sensitive to price changes, so just a small change in price results in a very substantial change in quantity demanded. Or it could be inelastic, whereby price may change very significantly, but quantity demanded hardly responds at all. And those are the two scenarios which I'm going to model on these two diagrams. Now, why might it be the case that the government might introduce an indirect tax? Well, let's use this old familiar phrase, familiar friend once again, the behavioural nudge. So it might be to reduce consumption of a certain good, uh, I being a bit of an athlete myself in my spare time, you know, I don't like too many sugary drinks and that sort of thing. But it might be the case that the government decides it's appropriate to put a tax on sugary drinks to reduce your consumption, to improve uh, your dental hygiene, all of those types of things. Or it might be more simple than that, it might be the case that the government is seek simply seeking to raise more revenue and as a consequence of that, they look for easy targets in terms of taxation. Uh, there's that whole sort of notion of when the government introduces significant taxes on demerit goods, such as alcohol and tobacco, well, are they really doing that for paternal reasons, because they're interested in your well-being, or is it simply because they know that if they introduce a tax on a good which has very significant inelastic demand, then they can predict the total revenue which will be uh, going into the coffers of the Treasury. Although, of course, we've seen in the spring statement last week that those coffers are looking more and more healthy by the week. That's in spite of Brexit. And then finally, it might be to improve the allocation of resources. So to move the economy towards a more allocatively efficient um, and we've talked about that with regard to market failure. I've covered market failure in other videos, and I'll put a little link just up to my left-hand side here 
a little card where you can flick to those videos in another playlist. Okay, that's the sort of the basic knowledge application. Let's now get to some analysis with regard to these two diagrams. So here we have the tax for inelastic demand here, and here we have the tax on an elastic demand. And let's just compare what happens. So I'll talk you through this as if you're starting relatively from scratch. Here's our demand, here's supply. You know that a tax increase is cost of production. That shifts the supply curve to the left or upwards. And as a consequence, you can see price rises from P1 to PT. Quantity demanded and supplies drops off from Q1 to QT. And this vertical distance here, AB, that is the size of the tax per unit. Now, given that this is an indirect tax, you could, of course, draw those curves diverging because VAT as a percentage means that the curves would actually be moving apart as price goes up. But it's, it's fine to just keep them as parallel lines at this point. So AV is the vertical distance of the tax. We can see that as a consequence of the tax being introduced here, quantity demanded has fallen. Now that's relatively elastic, that particular curve, and quantity demanded has fallen a relatively significant amount as a result. Let's not forget that the government will be raising revenue here, and you know, think to your themes paper and multiple choice and all of that sort of thing. You might be asked to identify changes in the uh, total revenue raised by the government. Well, the revenue in this case would be PT, A, B, PB. So that's the quantity of the goods that are being sold, multiplied obviously by the vertical distance, which is the tax per unit. If you wanted to consider welfare issues here, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not going to really get into that at this point, but you could, of course, therefore be considering, well, what's happening to consumer surplus? Obviously, as price rises, consumer surplus will be dropping off. And what's happening to producer surplus? Well, as the supply curve is moving up, bearing in mind that producer surplus is the area above supply and below price, you obviously need to model that here just to see exactly what's happening to the producer surplus. So that's elastic demand. What about if demand is inelastic? Same thing, so I'll, I'll not explain the, the, um, the rudimentary parts of the diagram. Suffice to say, again, relatively uh, similar size of tax, but this time look at the difference in the reduction in the quantity demanded. So price has gone up significantly more to the consumer. So here P1 to P2 is that distance. In the elastic circumstance, it's only that distance. So first of all, price has gone up a lot more, but quantity demanded has dropped off a lot less. And of course, that all harks back to what we said at the beginning of the video with regards to the insensitivity of demand to price. Vertical distance, again, is still the size of the tax per unit. And you can see the area of the tax revenue afforded to the government is PTABPB once again. The interesting thing to note in this instance is, of course, the proportion of the tax here, which is now being paid by the consumer. Overwhelmingly, I'll just shade this area here. So P1, call that C, A, P, T, that is now being borne by the consumer, whereas this much smaller section beneath, so that would be P, B, B to here and across, that is being borne by the producer. So overwhelmingly, the onus, the uh, burden, is being placed upon the consumer. Whereas in this case, you can see it's almost, in this one anyway, it's a, a sort of 50-50 split in that respect. So, it would appear, ladies and gentlemen, would it not, that the tax, in this instance, if its sole purpose is to reduce consumption, to maybe try to move it to a more allocatedly efficient level, well, it's, it's not working. Uh, because if, let's say, this quantity here was the AE, the allocatively efficient level, well, to get anywhere near here, you would have to be introducing a tax which shifted supply almost up to here, if we were to run that demand curve further up. So the tax would have to be enormous! Okay, so 
So that's the diagram, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's consider a few points of discussion and conclusions here. Well, we can certainly see, can we not, that the more inelastic the demand, the smaller the fall in quantity demanded. The larger the tax that would be required, if you're trying to get to AE here, the tax would have to be enormous. The more difficult it is also to nudge behaviour. I mean, taxes on sugary drinks and using plastic bags and people who are addicted on cigarettes, it doesn't really make any difference, does it? I mean, when I go to Tezzy's and I have to purchase my five pence bag, or whatever it is, I just pay the five pence. If I've got no bag, where am I going to put the groceries for the week? So you just need a bag, it's essential. So you just do it, don't you? Coca-Cola, Mars bars, etc. We all love those, don't we? We all love those things. And so you just pay the tax anyway. And then number four, the larger the revenue raised here, so one might argue, well, if you raise more revenue, perhaps you could then put more money into finding better, uh, healthier means of production with the same sweet taste as you enjoy on your normal full-fat Coca-Cola. Perhaps we have that Coke Zero, although I believe that's just as bad for you anyway. So, there are all sorts of issues here, and of course, in an exam-style question, your job would be to analyse this, but then to go on to consider, well, not only is tax uh, a possible remedy to this problem, but there are other remedies. So, if it was, for example, um, sweets and uh, the unhealthy nature of them, perhaps you might say, well, maybe the government alternatively should subsidise firms to research into producing more healthy foods, which are not as rich in sugar. Perhaps that would be more effective, and then you could go into the whole analysis of subsidy. So we're going to leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, look forward to seeing you again next time. If this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, thank you. Um, if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button at the bottom and that little bell there as well so you get all of my uh, daily notifications. I hope you know that I'm uploading on a daily basis at the moment. If you don't follow me on other social media, so that would be Instagram, G underscore economics, check it out. Twitter, G underscore economics, check that one out as well. And obviously keep up to date with all the latest goings on in the world of G economics at gconomics.co.uk forward slash events. Bye for now.